Sword of Gujian, a 2,500-year-old blade that never rusted and still slices like it was forged yesterday. Back in 1965, a team of archaeologists was digging up an ancient tomb in Hubei province. Inside a waterlogged coffin, next to a skeleton, they found a bronze sword. When they pulled it out of its wooden scabbard, the blade was shiny, almost like new and still razor sharp. On it, there were inscriptions written in an old seal script. It read something like, Made for the personal use of the King of Yue. That's King Gujian, a legendary ruler from 500 BCE. What stunned researchers wasn't just how old it was, but how advanced it is. The sword was made from a copper tin alloy. The core had more copper, making it flexible, while the edges had more tin, keeping them sharp. That's advanced metallurgy. Even more bizarre, the scabbard was airtight, almost like it had been vacuum sealed for centuries. And here's the wild part. That black diamond pattern along the blade? Under the microscope, it turned out to be copper sulfide crystals, a microscopic layer that acted like primitive nanotech. We can kind of recreate the sword of Gujian today, but matching its durability, precision, and beauty? That's still out of reach even with modern metallurgy. So how did they do it 2,500 years ago? We're still not entirely sure. South Pointing Chariot. A cart that always points south, yet without magnets or tech. The South Pointing Chariot dates back nearly 1,800 years to the Three Kingdoms period. According to records, it was perfected by an engineer named Ma Jun. And no, it wasn't a myth. This was a real working machine. On top of the chariot stood a figure, usually an arm or doll, and no matter how the cart turned, that figure always pointed south. How? It used a complex system of gears, kind of like an early version of a car differential. As the wheels turned, the gears rotated the figure in the opposite direction, keeping it oriented south at all times. You'd set it at the start of your journey, and from there, it would remember the direction as you moved. Think of it as the world's first mechanical GPS, powered by nothing but wheels and math. And here's what's really wild. This was around 800 years before differential gears showed up in Europe. The idea that ancient engineers had the mechanical precision to make something like this still stuns modern historians. Today, engineers and hobbyists have recreated working versions using wood, metal, and even 3D printed parts. And they work. The logic holds up. Ma Wangdui Silk Garment A 2,000-year-old robe so thin it's nearly invisible. Back in 1972, a team of archaeologists was excavating a tomb in Changsha, Hunan, which belonged to a noblewoman, Lady Dai, from the Western Han Dynasty. The tomb itself was packed with all sorts of treasures, but one object left everyone speechless. Folded neatly in the coffin was what looked like a shimmer of air. They carefully unfolded it and discovered a full-length silk robe, wide sleeves, crossed collar, fully stitched and tailored. And the weight? Just 49 grams. That's lighter than a slice of bread or a pair of earbuds. But the real mind-bender was the fabric. It was woven at 60 threads per centimeter, using silk threads just 10 denier thick. That's about one-fifth the thickness of human hair, and even finer than most modern luxury silk. Textile experts in modern China tried to recreate it using traditional tools. It took them 20 years, dozens of failures, and a team of master weavers to make a replica just half a gram off the original. And even then, they admitted, the original basically superhuman. Sangsing Dewey Bronze Masks and Trees Massive bronze masks, towering sacred trees built by unknown civilization. In 1986, construction workers digging near a river in Sichuan, China, stumbled upon something that would rewrite the early history of Chinese civilization. Beneath the dirt were two sacrificial pits, and inside them, an entire Bronze Age culture no one even knew existed. What they uncovered was like something from another world. Dozens of massive bronze masks and heads with huge almond-shaped eyes, sharp features, and wing-like ears. The style was so surreal, some even thought it looked alien. But the most jaw-dropping discovery? A four-meter-tall bronze sacred tree. The largest ancient bronze artifact ever found in China. Covered in dragons, birds, and curling branches, it was cast in modular segments and then welded together using a form of metallurgical joining that shouldn't have existed in 1200 BCE. And here's where things get really strange. The bronze they used was unusually rich in lead and tin, making it heavier, stronger, and able to hold incredible detail. Experts say the casting process would have needed precise molds, lost wax techniques, and sustained heat over 1,000 degrees Celsius. That's centuries ahead of its time. No written records, no mentions in any classic texts. The legacy they left behind is eerie and far too advanced for their era. Mies Porcelain Ancient Tang Dynasty porcelain with a glaze no modern lab can replicate. For centuries, there were rumors of a mysterious porcelain from the Tang Dynasty. 
a type so refined, so exclusive, it was said to be made only for the emperor. People called it secret color porcelain, but no one had ever seen a verified piece until 1987. Archaeologists were excavating a sealed underground chamber beneath Faman Temple, and inside, they found a set of porcelain bowls. On them, two characters carved into the surface, Mise, secret color. It wasn't just a myth, it was real. And what made these pieces so special? The glaze. It's thick, perfectly smooth, and somehow looks both glassy and soft at the same time. Experts say it gives the illusion of still water trapped beneath the surface even though it's completely solid. Despite all our modern labs, kilns, and analysis tools, no one has been able to fully recreate it. Scientists know the basic materials, the chemical composition of the glaze, but the exact conditions of the firing process, the kiln atmosphere, the temperature timing, that part of the formula disappeared when the Tang Dynasty collapsed, so what we're left with are a few surviving pieces of miceware. Perfect, ethereal, and unreproducible. Zhang Heng's seismoscope, a 1,800-year-old device that detected distant earthquakes with dragons and toads. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, a Chinese polymath named Zhang Heng unveiled something that stunned the imperial court, a large bronze device covered in eight dragon heads, each gripping a tiny bronze ball. Beneath each dragon sat a toad, mouth open, waiting. Zhang Heng said this device could detect earthquakes, something no one had ever seen before. The court was skeptical, until one day a single ball dropped. No one in the capital felt anything. But days later, messengers arrived. An earthquake had struck in the exact direction the dragon had pointed, hundreds of kilometers away. We don't have the original blueprints, but ancient texts describe a mechanism inside, likely a suspended pendulum. When the ground shook even slightly, the pendulum would sway and trigger just one dragon's release, dropping the ball into the waiting toad's mouth to show the quake's direction. It was the first directional seismic sensor in recorded history. Modern engineers have built replicas. One even detected simulated earthquakes in a 2005 lab test, but tuning it to ignore false signals like nearby footsteps is incredibly difficult. And somehow, Zhang Hung and his team figured it out, likely through trial and error. Magic Bronze Mirror A solid metal mirror that projects hidden images with sunlight. At first glance, it looks like an ordinary polished bronze mirror, something you'd use for grooming in ancient China. But here's the twist. When sunlight reflects off it and onto a nearby wall, an image appears, the exact same design engraved on the back of the mirror, as if the light passed straight through solid bronze. To people in the Tang Dynasty, this was pure sorcery. So how does it actually work? It turns out the secret isn't on the back, it's on the front. When artisans polished the mirror's surface, they created microscopic variations in thickness, invisible to the naked eye but enough to bend light. So, when bright light hit the mirror, it scattered in a way that reconstructed the hidden pattern onto a flat surface. And here's the kicker. This optical effect wasn't fully explained until the 1800s, over a thousand years after these mirrors were first made. Modern researchers have recreated them with laser tools and precision polishing, but ancient artisans did it without any of that, just bronze, sunlight, and an almost supernatural understanding of materials. Kailan's paper, the 2,000-year-old invention that made knowledge portable. We take it for granted now, but during the Eastern Han Dynasty, a Chinese court official named Kai Lun came up with something that would quietly change the course of civilization, modern paper. Before that, people were writing on silk, bamboo strips, even animal bones. But silk was expensive and bamboo, heavy, rigid, and a pain to store. What Kai Lun did was genius in its simplicity. He took tree bark, hemp, old rags, even fishing nets, and mashed them down into pulp. Then he mixed that pulp with water, spread it into a thin layer, and let it dry. The result? A lightweight, flexible, writable sheet. It didn't just make writing easier, it made knowledge portable. Not just across China, but eventually across Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, as papermaking spread along the Silk Road. And here's what's wild. Some of that Han Dynasty paper is still readable today. The fibers so finely processed, they've lasted nearly 2,000 years without turning to dust. Modern researchers have tried to recreate Kai Lun's process using only period tools and materials. Turns out, it's tricky. Getting the pulp right, layering it evenly, drying it without cracking, it all takes skill. It was an early form of materials engineering.